Yeah, man. Finally got some parts in. I was waiting on some bearings for this MST-206. Uh, I guess, as you know, there's a upgrade to put bearings in it. What they usually do is, I guess there's a needle bearing and then some kind of spacer. And from what I was finding, it's like 20 25 bucks, something like that. Well, I knew that it was uh, from looking up some parts and looking around. I found out, oh, they, they just said it's a, uh, oh, it's a 6203 bearing. Okay, okay. So uh, I actually had a couple of those laying around, and I went to check them. And a standard 6203 uses, uh, that would fit a 5 8 shaft, not a 3 quarters. So actually, after doing some more looking around, some more looking around, some more, I finally came up with... 6203 2RS-3 three quarters. It's got a three quarter bore. Um, yeah, shoot, sorry about that. There. So that'll fit right in place. Beautiful. And uh, I got these shipped. It was like ten fifty off eBay for two versus what? Uh, 20 aside for those needle bearings. Uh, I'm pretty much ready to put this thing all together. Uh, what I ended up doing, that number, 6203 2RS, 3 quarters, uh, these are sealed bearings. They actually got, you know, seals in each side. But uh, I figured it needs lubrication. Uh, at the end, so I just pulled out the whole seal on each side uh, because it does have those seals in the ends of the axles. I, you know, MST is uh, factory gear oil filled, so it's kind of nice. Um, what the heck was it to the? Uh, I ended up trying. <laughs> yeah, I ended up trying using the uh, knurling tool because the bearing slid right on nice and easy. I guess it's hardened because I didn't have much luck. I got a little bit into it and they fit a little tighter, but uh, it wasn't the greatest. I ended up using a little bit of some of that stuff. And uh, just to make sure, they slid on okay, had some friction to the inner race. So, eh, okay. Hopefully that shouldn't you know, keep it from turning and it'll have a little better support on it. Uh, so what I did was... Ended up over here at the case. I put a couple of punch marks in there just to, uh, that way it'll hold the bearing a little better. It's called peening. You can just hit it with a punch mark and it displaces the metal a little bit. It's kind of a, it's kind of a band-aid, but it, it can work and it can help you out. Um, so uh, this thing's all cleaned up, ready to go. You know, got it greased for the, Got my input shaft greased. Uh, got my vent all set. And I don't know. Uh, got to put a little lube down in the axles there, I figured. You know, put a little bit in there. And I was going to use some of the anaerobic. I like that stuff. Sounds like a big word, but all it means is it just dries in the absence of air. So. Um, I think I'm going to use the anaerobic around the whole case, and uh, it's not as nasty as RTV. If you got to open it back up again, the stuff just wipes right off if it's oozed out the side of the case or inside, and it, it just about comes right off with brake cleaner or even uh, you just about wipe the stuff off with a rag. But um, yeah, actually, again on the bearings. Um, since I did was I did I pulled the seals off of each side so it get lube in each side. Um, I think the bearings in that 801 over there, um, you know, I think if I remember right when I had it apart, I'd have to look at the other video I had. I can't remember. They might have been shielded or they might have been open just like that. But shielded bearings, the shielded non-contacts would be all right because uh, the lube could still flow through them at least to get to the end of the axle and everything. Um, actually, I did a little bit. I didn't mention it. Yeah, there was nothing major. I noticed there was like a lubrication uh, notch right there in the case, so I ground it a little deeper, and 
I did the same thing over here. I mean, I noticed a lot on the factory. There was a lot of RTV that oozed in here, and I think it was, you know, it compromised lubrication a little bit. So the anaerobic will kind of help with that. Um, it can, it can, it doesn't really dry. So, uh, and I'll just be careful with putting it around some of the edges. And uh, other than that, I think this thing will be all right. Finished, uh, did the welding, that aluminum welding trick, and. Uh, let me grab this thing so I get it in the light a little better. Okay, you see that whole piece on the end there. It was just about, it was cracked all the way around, of course, and when I, you know, I know when I bent it back, it was going to crack more. And um, the edge of that is a little hinky, and I ended up uh, welding the corner on it and just filing it down flat. You know, um, it's it's fair. I got a little more work to do to it, but I think I can do it when it's assembled. Um, I can just sit there. Other than that, I mean, I'm going to juice this thing up here in a minute, put a little pre-lube around it. Got to put my seals in the end of the axles. Uh, I figured to throw some back in the differential area. and uh, I'm going to mix up a little Lucas and uh, some gear oil and just... I'll fill it with a case. I think I found something recommendation was like, uh, I guess they're factory filled. It's like 16 ounces. Ain't really much, but uh, that's all right. So, yeah, I should get this thing together. I'm not probably swapping it out right away or anything like that. I mean, the 801 I got in here, I'm running. Um, that thing's working pretty good. I just, just uh, I don't want to blow it up. It's a good, strong transmission, I guess, kind of. It's decent, um, and I've already modded it, but... Uh, yeah, eh, this thing's been working all right. I ended up having to modify the hood hinges and put a bushing sticking through them because just the pin riding on the hood hinge itself, it actually walled out the holes really bad. And uh, you can see yeah, the way the pin is. The pin goes all the way through. The bushing is, uh, I cut the bushing in half and put each half, one half in this side and then one half over here. You kind of see it's tack welded in there and uh, it's tack welded in there so now when I put the pin through it, when I put the pin through it's got a lot of bearing surface now for the pin to ride so the hole was in, in the hood was actually wallowed out enough to where the bushing just fell right in it was perfect you know and uh, I welded the bushing to a washer first and um, did that but it got kind of all butchered up because the only bushings I was able to get were the ones that were split I wanted to tack weld them together for strength and then end up blowing a hole in it and ah, just it all went to heck but I mean hey it's a mower it ain't like it's a show vehicle and I figured it's good enough but yeah man so she's a runner and I don't want to really you know I ain't gonna take it down right now and swap out the boxes but uh, actually since I put that adjustable idler in a while ago too uh, somebody was saying something these MSTs might have like three different ratios and God forbid, I hope I don't have, like, the slowest one and this thing goes any slower. I mean, it does, like, 23 or 24 or something like that, maybe. And um, I got a 3-inch pulley I could swap on it, but I don't really want to go smaller on the back. And uh, if I end up going bigger on the front, I'm going to have to kind of redo the front suspension. Uh, or add a bunch of idlers. It'd be a big mess. And, um, I mean, eventually I do want to do something but I think it's almost a better way to do that is to uh, get a couple of gearboxes and start playing with some stuff here and if you could switch those two out almost in any gearbox if you could put you know put a put a smaller one here and a larger one there uh, you know internally you can speed it up so you won't have to drive the pulleys uh, at such crazy ratios and have a crazy input speed and everything um, I know that for like those 820s, they sell those uh, kits, but it's like 180 bucks for the gears. But hey, I got, you know, got the machine shop in there and everything. So uh, ain't worried about that. I can, if I can get a couple of spare gear boxes, I can hack them apart, you know, bust out the welder, hack gear, uh, apart some gears and, uh, you know, maybe internally speed it up and, and I think it can be pretty much done with any gear box if, if you're crafty. So, yeah, I want to try to get this thing hopefully sealed up here in a few minutes. So, 
I'm out. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Bye.